Hi guys, Thinking Through Code over here, back at it again with another video. Today we're actually going to close a loop on ge grid geometry management by simply talking about resizing your window. It's a very easy video, guys. Just two examples that I have for you guys and you'll pretty much get it. So uh, once again, I give you my advice. Watch this video on 1080p. The code is going to look a lot cleaner on your screen and a lot more readable. So, so far we've been looking at how to pretty much make a widget react to the change in size of a row or a column. But what about when a row and column need to react to the change in size of the window itself? This is what we're going to look into today by simply just exploring the column configure method and the row configure method that can be applied into, uh, into the grid pretty much. So you're going to pretty much take your parent widget wherever all your, your widgets are contained in or your window. And then you're going to configure the columns and the rows. That's how you're going to make them dynamic so that they can adapt to a resize of the window. All right, guys. So on our last video, we pretty much created this GUI application. Very simple, very straightforward. It's just a couple of frames. You also notice that your window is pretty much at first by default taking the size of whatever is inside of it. So the width of my window is a combination of all these widths added together. And the height is the same thing on this side. But... Um, what happens when we expand the window? You see a lot of dead space, right? And that's not truly efficient. Like for example, if I do this, I want my application to adapt to it. I don't, I don't want it to have some dead space. So this can become problematic because there is no app out there, a uh, web app out, out there that simply is going to have a fixed window size all the time. That is not really user friendly on top of it, right? Because uh, why does, why can we do this? Think about it. Why would you be able to do this? Because you want to adapt. Sometimes you want to see more than one screen. It doesn't matter. You know, it's just better for user experience and you need to make sure that your application is adapting to it. And that's where row configure and column configure are useful to us. So we're going to start experimenting with it. We realize here that the parent of all my of all my frames is the root, my window, right? But your parent could be another frame on top of it. It really doesn't matter. But you're gonna configure the columns and rows inside of the parent of each frame that you're putting in it. So everything that we've been doing so far, column span, row span, sticky, and placing in a certain specific row in a certain specific specific column is what happens inside of a column is basically the behavior of a widget inside of a column, right? You're placing it by calling these two and then you're telling it how to behave. But what about the column themselves? Because when I run this application, what happens to the columns and rows? They stay the same. They're not behaving as something that is dynamic and adaptable. So that's where these things are going to be extremely important. We made our widgets inside of our columns adaptable, which is great. And our, and our rows, by the way, they're, they're adaptable. But are the columns and rows themselves adaptable? That's what we need to dive into in order to actually handle resizing of our GUI application. So let's get right to it. We're going to use the either the parent widget or the main window, whatever you're placing your, your, your widgets, you're going to put root and then column configure. Now, when you call the function, and I'm actually going to try root and row configure. When you call it, when you call these uh, functions, you can give it now an index, which is going to be the index of uh, whatever column or row you want to use. We're going to target the, the zeroth column and the zeroth uh, row in here, and then we're going to give it a weight. And whatever weight you give to a column or um, a row, that's telling them how much space they're going to take when, when things expand. So when I run this, what's happening here? Okay, so we have a row zero and our column zero, right? And by default, all these rows and columns, they have a weight of zero, okay? And that means that when the window's going to expand, they're just going to stay the same. They're going to keep the same size that they're determined by their frames, right? But by giving them a weight of one, what I'm telling them is that the row zero and the column zero are going to expand to take the extra space when my window expands. So let's see. There you have it. Here's what's interesting. You see column two and column zero and column, uh, column one and column two. Sorry, guys. Again, column one and column two, 
they kept the same size. You could see this frame by keeping the same size and this one, but they kept the same width. Let, let me just re-explain that. But the column zero actually expanded to take the extra space. Same thing happened with my rows. My row two and my row one kept the same height, but my row zero extended itself. And since these widgets are adaptable, for example, this one, since it's sticking on north, south, east, and west, as the row grew, this one grew as well. But if you could really notice the rest, they, they're at a weight of one. These rows are a weight of one, and these columns are at a weight of one. So they're not taking the extra space. However, this column and this row are expanding themselves. Just like I explained, this one is sticking on north, south, east, and west. The same thing happened here. It's width changed because the column on its own changed. And that's how you use this. So let's go ahead and try another example. We're going to close this GUI application. And you know what? We're going to take away the row for now. We're going to get back to it. Let's go with the root column configure once again. And let's target their column number one. We're going to give it a weight of two. Let's see what happens there. We run our GUI application. We expand it. Okay, we got something way different. So first of all, I want you to notice how we do have some dead space in the bottom row now. Well, after the dot bottom row, this is because now all of our rows are at default weight of zero. So none of them are expanding to take the extra space when your window expands, right? So the height of them all remains the same, right? This one was 200, 250. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this one's a hundred and we noticed something different on the on the columns. This column zero had a weight of one. This one has a weight of zero, column two. That therefore it's gonna have a width of a hundred. It's not gonna take any dead space. Uh, in order, it's, it won't cover that. It's gonna stay the same. And this one having a weight of two. Actually, what we notice what happens here is that whatever was added here, the double was added here. So this is the pretty much the golden rule. When it comes to weight. If you give one a weight of two, it means that for every pixel that is expanded, for every pixel that this column is gonna gain, this column is gonna gain two. So basically, if you if you actually take the pixels and understand how much their dimensions are, you're gonna realize that this one, the pixels that were added to it are double the pixels that were added here. If you kinda understand where I'm going with this. So how about I go and I do a root column configure. Now let's go for two and we give it a weight of three. We're going to close our application, run it again and expand this. Okay. Now this seems a little bit more uniform, but mind you, this was at a hundred and it's been taking the th three times as much pixels as these two guys. As this one actually three times as much more pixels as this guy and it's been taking one more pixel for every every two pixels this guy gets i don't know if you guys kind of follow where i'm going with this but it's basically just like a hierarchy guys and whenever this one gets a pixel this one's gonna get two and this one's gonna get three and that's basically how you play with proportions it's all a game of proportions on this one and you know what let's go and do the same thing for rows now row configure so I'm going to make the row configure of, uh, I, I want the, the top row, row zero to remain the same. We're only going to change the weight of the second row, which is row one, weight one and root row configure two is going to have a weight of two. Actually, let's give it four. So now we realize that for every pixel, this one's going to gain, this one's going to gain four until there's no more space and it's full screen. So when we run this application, what do we realize? We're going to expand it. Okay. This one stayed the same. So this row, the, the height is the exact same. Nothing changed. This one expanded a little bit and only a little bit, not a noticeable amount because this one pretty much took the whole cake right? <laughs> I'm going to use cake, you know, whatever. And so this one pretty much took the, the whole amount of pixels that were being expanded. So since this one is expanding at a faster rate than this one, the, the space looks a little bit more uniform, but this still applies. And guys, it's as simple as that. That's how you make your, your window more dynamic. And that's how you can adapt it. You see this? You can adapt it to any space that is being taken.
and it's a better user experience. You see how this one is expanding, but this one is expanding faster? That's because of the weight being four against one. And that's it. So use it wisely, guys. If you understand proportions, you're gonna understand this for sure. And um, that's, that's gonna be it for this video. I wanna thank you guys for staying all the way till the end of this video. You already know the drill. If you like this video, click the like button, press the subscribe button and click on the notifications button so that you know whenever I'm gonna post a video. If you did not like it or if you wanna leave a comment, feel free to do it down below. I'm always all ears for you guys. So thank you so much guys and have a good one.